Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So today we're going to be discussing exactly how saturated dropshipping actually is. So when I do the strategy calls for people looking to join the academy, one popular question which keeps cropping up is how saturated is dropshipping? How competitive is it? And can you actually make any money doing it? So I thought it'd make a nice topic to do a video on YouTube for it. As always, I'm going to be giving you my honest answer and also backing up my answers with the proof and evidence behind the reasons I I give. So I've got some pretty interesting images to show you which will illustrate just how competitive dropshipping is in certain countries so make sure you stay tuned for that and then at the end of the video I'm also going to give you my top three countries to dropship to and the reasons behind them and then also my top three tips for making sure that you and your business stand out from the competition which will ultimately increase your chances of success. So that's the topic of the video thanks for tuning in I hope you enjoy it and let's jump straight into it. So how saturated is dropshipping? And um, there's gonna be a couple of points in which I go through. Number one is gonna be, it depends on where you're selling. And then number two obviously depends on what you're selling because not all niches or not all industries are obviously gonna have kind of like the same rate of competition. One thing before we jump into it that I wanna preface it with is I'm a big believer that no matter what you sell or where you sell it, to some degree obviously, um, then you can be successful. There's always, for example, new shoe brands or new clothing brands coming onto the scene which are typically like some of the most popular and competitive industries in the world but it doesn't stop more brands and so on kind of coming into that space and doing really really well ultimately it comes down to the products that you sell and then obviously how successful you are in terms of the marketing campaigns in which you run and kind of like the desirability behind the brand anyway with that being said then number one it depends on where you are selling so if we take a look at this first image this is taken taken from Obolo. Um, so feel free to head over to their website and kind of look at the post they did behind this. So essentially what you're looking at is the order volumes broken down country by country that go through Obolo. What you have to remember is Obolo is the link between Shopify and AliExpress. So these order numbers are going to be purely from dropshippers. What a lot of people forget is that AliExpress isn't just for dropshipping. There's a lot of end users and consumers actually shopping on that platform. So if you see a particular product on AliExpress, which has thousands of orders that doesn't always translate into it being a good product to actually drop ship but these numbers because they're coming direct from Oblo these are purely orders processed through their platform and therefore drop shipping products so looking at the graph we can obviously see Great Britain um, is the most popular countries from the ones listed so obviously our Great Britain Australia Canada France and so on. So depending on which ones of these countries you do decide to actually go into and sell in, from what we can see from this particular image is that Great Britain is more popular than for instance, say Italy or Spain. However, what a lot of people tend to do when they think of dropshipping because the space in terms of education is dominated quite a lot by people in America. Um, people tend to associate dropshipping with America and that's where a lot of people go straight to um, to actually sell their products. But if we take a look at the same image but include the US we can actually see that America in comparison to the UK Australia all of these other countries is significantly more popular in terms of how many people are actually selling there and how many people are actually processing orders to customers which are being shipped from AliExpress to the United States. If we carry on then and have a look at the USA versus the rest of the world, so essentially this image is the same thing, the order volumes for the United States versus the rest of the world. Essentially there's more orders going through the Oberlo platform to the US than there is versus every single other country in the world combined. This is also reflected in the CPM costs. So your CPM, the information that Facebook gives you for CPMs is your cost per 1000 impressions. Impressions is essentially when somebody sees it. So when it pops up on somebody's device as an example, and according to this particular website, Lead Guru, then the USA has an average CPM, this is on Facebook too, of $7.34, and the UK has an average CPM PM of $3.15. Essentially what this means is you can reach twice the amount of people when advertising in the UK versus advertising in the USA. What you have to keep in mind, take a pinch of salt with this particular information, is this is all based on averages. So obviously depending on what kind of audience you're trying to target within these countries can obviously reflect um, how competitive or how expensive the C 
CPM is. That $3.15 is obviously as an average, that $7.34 is obviously as an average. It can be higher, it can be lower, depending on how big or how large, um, how big or how small, sorry, the audience is that you select within these individual countries. Number two then, it also depends on what you're selling. So to answer the question of how saturated is drop shipping, it depends on exactly what you're selling. So again, these images all taken from Oblo. Oblo is a great resource for finding out this sort of things because obviously all the orders they process are from drop shipping businesses. And this is the total orders by category for the entire world. So what we can see is that women's clothing accessories and home and garden are pretty much um, identical and if you compare these to say beauty and health and sports and entertainment then these two on the left are obviously a lot more competitive versus these two on the right. If we scroll down and take a look at this other image taken from Oblo, these are the total orders by category for the UK. So what if we compare these two against each other then what they kind of indicate is that women's clothing and accessories is not wholly that competitive in the UK if we compare it to again the rest of the world so potentially if we can find a product within that niche then there's a lot of potential there moving into the summary then just to quickly recap on what we've been over and um, there's no need to make this video crazy crazy long um, don't always immediately jump to the us or think the us when it comes to running a drop shipping business Yes, there's a whole lot more products available there and shipping times may be quicker depending on obviously where your supplier is located, but it's so much more competitive in terms of the illustrations which I've shown you in this video. So even though yes, there are more customers and people do spend more money, there's also a lot more competition over there. So it doesn't always translate into an easier business when it, come, when it comes to being successful. And if there's one piece of advice that I want you guys um, to take away from this video is instead of immediately thinking US, think English speaking countries that aren't in the US. And this leads me nicely onto the top countries to drop ship to um, outside of the US. So this is the top 12 English proficiency index taken from Wikipedia. And essentially what this illustrates is all the countries which have an English proficiency score um, of very high. And what proficiency C means is essentially the population of the country which actually understand English, can read it, can speak it, so on and so forth. So my advice is if you did want to experiment with some of the suggestions in this video and test some of these countries would be to set them up, set your ad sets up, divide them up country by country, measure things like your click through rate, your cost per link click, see if you can actually get any conversions from any of these countries. Once you've got all the information and data back from the tests you've ran on Facebook, then it will give you a clear direction to go in. So let's say, for example, we take the top five countries and we separate our ad sets up for each one of these and we find that, let's say, Sweden is the highest converting, we're getting really good results. Then what I would do is actually then kind of double down on what's working, set my store up to kind of be based around a Swedish looking store in terms of the currencies. And you could even look at maybe getting a virtual address over there so you can have maybe even like a Swedish phone number too. So it is set up as essentially from somebody looking at it from the outside is a Swedish business based in Sweden, which in turn is gonna help customers trust you a lot more. So definitely something worth taking away from this video is don't always think US, think other countries outside, but also have a high English proficiency, um, not to mention obviously England itself. Moving down then into the top three tips to stand out from your competition. They're quite simple, but trust me, the impact of these can make a significant difference. Number one is original content. Every social media platform out there prefers original content. I've noticed it myself. When I repost something from somebody else, the reach it gets will be insignificant versus an actual piece of content I've created myself um, on Instagram and on Facebook. So don't underestimate the power of that. When it comes to original content, make sure your ad is original and make sure the product photos on your Shopify store are original as well. So for instance, if they see a particular ad for a product they go on the website, that website looks really, really dodgy, or the product's super expensive, there's no contact information. They're gonna leave the website, go back to Facebook and think I'm not trusting them, the guys, I'm not gonna buy the products from them. One day later, they see the exact same ad, but it's from your particular Shopify store. They're not gonna click it, they're just gonna think, oh, I saw that ad yesterday, assume it's the same business, 
and therefore you're potentially going to lose out on the sale, you're going to lose out on the customer. But by having original content, um, original ads, original products, photos, it separates you from everybody else who has a typical AliExpress dropshipping store and in turn it's going to lead to a higher CTR, a cheaper cost per link click rate and a higher conversion rate more ultimately on Shopify as well. Number two, a really quick, easy, simple one is to brand the product. It makes you look much more professional. This can help if you brand the site as well and actually name the site after the particular product. So for instance, if you come a really, across a really cool product um, that has loads of kind of information and photos and content behind it, you could build a one product store behind it. So give your product an actual name, not just a description. So as a quick example, if you're selling, let's say, charge, in dock stations and instead of naming it the description which I see a lot of people do so a lot of people will just name it four in one Apple charging dock station give it an actual name and actually brand the product so it could be called the pro charger four in one Apple charging dock station because it just helps your business kind of own the product it takes ownership of it and again it just separates you from say a generic listing on eBay number three is credibility probably nine stores out of ten while I review you do not have these fundamental and basic expectations that a customer would want to see when they go into a site. I've seen it countless times before in people's ads on Facebook. Somebody will uh, somebody will comment, sorry, um, scam store, no telephone number and no address. So what you need to do is include all of these things on screen. It may seem pretty daunting, but you can pay for these services. So you haven't got to put your personal telephone number, haven't got to put your personal address, and you can get all of these things for about 40, 50 pounds per month which seems quite expensive but in reality you only need to really make two or three orders and it covers the cost of these and plus by having these things it will overnight it will drastically make a difference if you're getting a significant amount of volume to your site these things can make a difference overnight and trust me the return on investment for these sorts of things um, far outweighs the cost of them. So we have things like a telephone number, a physical address, you can use a virtual office, PO box, I don't really recommend PO boxes that often to be fair. Um, opening hours, if you have specific opening hours on your store you haven't got to hit here by them but it just gives off that impression of professionalism like you have a physical office that has people in between certain hours, a live chat function, super easy to do, custom my photos so one thing I like to do on some of my stores is when customers tag me on Instagram or sends me a photo or puts it in the comments I'll put it on the website I'll put a badge over the top of it which clearly states customer photos because then it's like a real life photo of the particular image of the particular product sorry and actually shows that somebody's bought it and again it's just great social proof and then obviously not to mention reviews it's over 60% of online shoppers will look for reviews in a product before committing to a purchase so so if you don't have reviews on your site, on your products, then you're losing money. There's no two ways about it. You're definitely going to be losing out on potential customers. So with that being said, guys, that pretty much wraps up the video. If you're still watching, still with me, I really do appreciate it. The support on the channel is awesome. Um, trust me, it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please do make sure you leave a like. Any comments, questions, video suggestions, just post them down below. And ultimately, if you enjoy my content, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. One last thing before you go, um, if you are looking for a program which comes with tons and tons of content and resources, my full support and guidance, uh, make sure you check out the Ecom Academy. There is a callback service. Um, I jump on the phone, it is me who will be talking to you on the phone before you commit. We can go through any questions or hesitations you have, um, put those to bed and get you started on the right track basically. So yeah, make sure you check that out. First link in the description and I'll see you in the next video.